Hey what's up guys, actually here back with a brand new video and this is my full review of the Asus Zenfone Zoom. Now I've been using the Zoom for a little over a month now and here's what I think about it. Now the Zenfone Zoom is clearly Asus most premium handset yet. It's solid, it's sturdy and comes with a removable leather rear cover, aluminium sides and chamfered edges and it's a pretty good looking smartphone. The back of the phone is dominated by the large camera piece with a single hand grip but we'll talk about that in a while. The zoom is pretty heavy and thick, but then again it's also pretty impressive that ASUS has managed to fit in an optical zoom inside, making it the world's thinnest phone with a 3x optical zoom. And apart from that, not a lot of stuff has changed from the Zenfone 2. On the front of the device, you still have the same 5.5 inch 1080p LCD display and it's decent with the display lacking in outer visibility and viewing angles with the super reflective chin and touch capacitive buttons that again aren't backlit with the sensors and the 5 megapixel front facing shooter being up top. Now powering it all up, you have a 2.5GHz quad-core Intel Atom Z3590 CPU with 4GB of RAM and it's fast like any other flagship on the market. There are absolutely no hiccups or slowdowns but the phone does tend to get heat up quite a lot while using the phone and especially when you're using the camera. It's not skin burning hot but you definitely feel it. On the right side of the device, you have a dedicated two-step shutter and record button which is awesome. They're super tactile and clicky with the volume rockers and the power button being just a little bit higher on the same side of the phone. On the bottom left you have your lanyard hold and the micro USB 2.0 port but I really wish that it had the USB Type-C but it doesn't and then you have your 3.5mm audio jack on the top. Now it's 2016 but the phone still runs on Android 5.0 Lollipop with Zen UI but I talked to Asus and they told me that the Marshmallow update is going to get released very soon and for now I'm not going to go into the software too much because it's exactly the same as any of the Zenfone that was released in 2015. And if you want to know more about that you can go ahead and watch my Zenfone 2 Deluxe video review and I'll make sure to leave the link down below in the description as well as on screen right now. But just to give you guys an overview it's highly customizable but comes with a lot, a lot of bloatware and unwanted applications something that I'm not a big fan of. Now underneath that leather rear cover you have your speaker which tends to get pretty loud and is crisp and clear, you have your micro sim card slot and you also have your micro SD card slot if you want to expand the standard 64 or 128 gigs to another 128 gigs. You also have your 3000 milliampere non removable battery and the battery life on this thing is pretty average, it barely got me through the day with some medium to heavy usage. But for now, let's put everything to the side. Let's talk about the star of the show. Let's talk about that camera. The Zenfone Zoom has a 13 megapixel primary shooter with laser autofocus, optical image stabilization, and a 3x optical zoom. And at first, when you hear the name Zoom, you would guess that the camera must be pretty damn good, right? Well, it's not. Now, I'm not saying that the phone has a terrible non-usable camera, but I'm saying that it's not the best one out there and especially for the price tag that it comes with. The camera app is filled with different modes like any of the Zenfone like manual HDR, but I hardly ever used it and always found myself using the auto mode on the phone. And the shots taken in bright sunlight were okay, they were, they were good, had decent detail, but start shooting in the dark or low lighting and the camera starts to fall down. Now the optical zoom on the phone actually works pretty well and the pictures taken with it definitely had more detail than the same shots that were taken with the digital zoom but at the end of the day that doesn't change how the pictures actually look. They're okay but nothing game changing. Now the OIS in the photo mode works really well in providing stabilization while clicking pictures but you can't use it in video if you go above 720p. Also for a flagship phone that stakes so much on its camera, it doesn't have 4K or RAW support or the brightest display which was one of the things that really really bothered me while clicking pictures outside which just doesn't make the zoom a good photo taking machine. Now the Zenfone zoom comes in two different colors black and white and comes in two different storage variants 64 gigs or 128 gigs costing $450 or $550 US dollars respectively. Now for that kind of money, should you buy this phone? Well, according to me, not really. There are much better phones out there right now like the Nexus 5X or the Nexus 6P that you can get at similar price points. But what if you really really love this phone for some reason? Well, it's not a bad phone. It has great internals and performs great, has a decent battery life, a decent display and a decent camera. But hey, you do have the world's thinnest phone with a 3x optical zoom. And I'm curious to see if Asus can improve the processing in the Marshmallow update. So that's pretty much it guys, that was my full review of the ASUS Zenfone Zoom. If you're still watching till this point in the video, don't forget to give the video a like rating, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and also don't forget to follow me on all my social media, my Snapchat, my Twitter, the links to those will be down below in the description. That's been it, thank you so much for watching, and I'll talk to you in the next one. Live long and prosper.